context of uh, what we've heard this morning, what we've seen in the written submission, did you at any point consider resigning as no, chair of CMAL? I didn't. And I, I have heard statements about that, that the board was threatening to resign. And I, I don't know who has dreamed that up, but uh, that has not been the case. I think there was reference in relation to mediation, which we may come on to at some point in these discussions, that, that um, there had been a letter sent by lawyers saying that the board had threatened to resign en masse. That is absolutely not true. Okay, so that was evidence we heard um, from Jim McCall, I think, Indeed. who said he'd been in a private meeting with Derek Mackay where the civil servants had been asked to leave and he'd been told that there was what he described as a legal letter from the board of CMAL threatening uh, resignation en masse. We know not of any existence of such letter. We did not send any such letter. We did not instruct any such letter to be sent and that the board did not threaten to resign en masse. And again, just for the record, Mr Ostergaard, neither did you as chair of the board, notwithstanding the very strong terms of the letter. I mean, you sent an email on the 26th of September uh, in the afternoon saying quite starkly, in my opinion, the best option would be to bin, to bin the present result and start from scratch on the basis of our initial requirements. Yeah. That, I mean, that, those are quite strong terms, aren't they? They are. And uh, when that um, advice was overridden, you didn't consider your position at that point? Well, as I said before, we, we got uh, what we needed. It was obvious that there was uh, an interest from the Scottish government to, to, uh, to see that that contract uh, uh, was awarded to FMEL. Uh, and I presume for consideration of economic development and job creations uh, uh, with the yard and, and in the area of the yard and those subcontractors that uh, would be involved in the contract. So from a government perspective, that that have probably been their interest. When we were looking at it as directors of the company, we had to safeguard that we were acting within the company's act and taking care of the company's interest. If you would look at the contract in isolation, that was not satisfying our tests to do that, but in the combination with the undertakings from the Scottish Government and the guarantees provided by FMEL, we were of the opinion that we would not put the company at risk and, and thereby we were prepared to enter into it. But we have also expressly said that that guarantee that was provided was, was not uh, into market standards. Yeah, I mean, so we've got an attachment uh, in an email which was sent, uh, I think, to ministers which says, uh, which is a, a note from CMAL at the time back in October 2015, which says that without guarantees for all payments made, there is a substantial risk. Uh, under normal circumstances, it is probably unlikely that a company of the size of CMAL would take on this risk. So it says under normal circumstances. What were the abnormal circumstances that you were operating under? The... the the circumstance was that we got an unconditional financial guarantee from the Scottish Government to put us in funds that if there was a problem that CMA would not be insolvent.